Madam Chairman, thank you for having me here. Um, I am here to answer any of your questions. Uh, Commissioner Hurd, if you have questions about the sampling, I'm here to answer it. This is a serious issue for the state. The health effects are serious. Uh, we certainly advise if you see algae or scum or floating mats on the water, stay away. Do not get in the water. Um, so it's this is something that has me, I've been in public service for 29 years. Uh, working with the environment, first at EPA and now here at Department of Environmental Protection. It's something that I take very seriously. I don't sleep at night uh, when, they, when these things are happening. Um, and so after arriving here last night at 9.30, um, I just read all the materials and I'm here to answer any questions you have. So I just want you to get on with your public meeting and, and I'll be here, right here, to answer any questions. Stay right there, sir. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Smith. Again, back to the same meeting uh, in, in D.C. Uh, with the South Florida Eco Task Force. Uh, Drew ended up chairing the meeting when the secretary needed to leave. Um, and again, what's incredibly important about the fact that we have our people, our Florida people, sitting at the table um, taking what needs to be taken and talking about what needs to be talked about. Um, Drew, thank you. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people want to blame a lot of people for a lot of things. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, you still have to have people that are willing to engage and willing to have people that are willing to participate and get it better. Uh, and I just, it, it's more of a thank you uh, for all that you guys are doing uh, and continue to do. Um, that group of people, there are 14 members of the board, correct? I think that's correct. Yeah. 14. Uh, you had people there from every corner of every piece of, of this issue that needed to be there. And again, having the congressman there and showing up and, and, and sort of challenging, I guess, uh, the board, uh, but also putting this into perspective and, and having it come back here to Stewart is super important. And thank you for being part of that and, and helping us get to a better place. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. Uh, what protocols does the DEP use for algae bloom testing? Great question, Commissioner. And I can't tell you the codes and the protocols, but this is why we test the way we test. Uh, first of all, our public message, whether it's on Lake Okeechobee, St. Lucie, Caloosahatchee, is stay away from the algae. You know, do not recreate in the algae because, you know, we don't know whether that algae is producing toxins at the time you are recreating. So when we go out and test, uh, what we need to understand is are the algae producing toxins? and that are getting into the waterway where people may not be swimming through algae, right? And so if we, so what we do is we test around it where we're telling people, you know, that you should not swim in the algae, but if they happen to swim next to it, we need to know whether they're producing toxins. And so we sample in the waterway itself where people could be recreating to be able to advise whether they're producing toxins or not. If we sample the actual algae itself, just through the laboratory methods, it's gonna show up with toxins, just because we're sampling and digesting the algae in the laboratory. And so that doesn't tell us, you know, whether there's toxins that they are producing in the natural environment. So it's important for us to be able to tell in the waterways where people might be recreating, whether there's toxins being produced or not. So we sample, we analyze, and we post on the website as soon as possible and let the Department of Health know as soon as possible. I'm, con I'm concerned that there, that people aren't recognizing the risks. Um, I've read news reports from Okeechobee that um, the people there say that the, the uh, algae doesn't become toxic until it's discharged into the C44. And I, uh, that's worrisome because it's, it's, it doesn't, that, I, I can't believe that that's true. I have to believe that it's it's uh, it's 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 toxic when it's in Lake Okeechobee too, and that people aren't aren't being told that it's toxic, and therefore aren't taking the precautions that they should be taking. Commissioner, our message is clear: uh, microcystis is a toxin-producing algae. You should not recreate in microcystis. Also. Um, we, we see the blooms and they're putrid and they smell, they're, they're extremely visible, but what about the, the uh, uh, toxins that are invisible? They die, they settle into the sediments, and then they're recycled into the fish populations. And man, I don't think we're, I don't, what, are we do, what are you doing in order to analyze those effects about it hits the algae bloom, hits the water, dies, sinks, 
gets into the sediment, then it accumulates in the fish population and it accumulates in the, in the seagrasses. What's being done in order to learn the risks of those poisons? It is a ongoing monitoring activity. We fund ourselves, we, out, we monitor um, all of our waterways routinely. We fund Orca, we fund Harbor Branch uh, to get a better understanding of microcystis. I remember when I uh, came down to the department 11 years ago and I walked into the lab and I saw beakers upon beakers of green water. Now, what is that? That's microcystis. We're trying to figure out what happens when it produces toxins, that type of stuff. I understand Moat is researching that as well. There's a lot going on to try to understand what's happening. The one thing we do know is when the blooms dissipate and they go away and we continue monitoring, the microcystin uh, toxin also goes away. And the theory we're researching is that there are bacteria that, that degrade it and eat it. Um, works for them. Uh, so we're not, we don't see it in the water column. Uh, after that, and from what I've read, we're not seeing it in fish tissue. If you're eating fish fillets, we're not seeing it in that either. Although we, you know, that research needs to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Question for you on a more of a statewide level. You know, we here for a long, long time have had the mantra of send it south. But as stewards of the environment, our community, and, and sort of good neighbors for our neighbors to the south, we don't think about just flushing the water south in any condition that it happens to be. We know that if it gets to the Everglades in bad condition, we've heard a national treasure. I believe that in Orlando, they also have the same mantra of send the water south, but there's no concern about what condition it's in when it heads south. And I know that when we talk about these issues, some of them are very expensive fixes. Uh, the C-44 reservoir needs to have a canal from the C-23, and we talk about dollar amounts with a B in billions than an M in millions. Uh, I don't know if our neighbors, and I don't necessarily mean St. Lucie County to the north, but I don't know if our neighbors to the north have the same concerns that we have. You know, Florida is obviously flat, but it's got a little southern pitch. So I wonder if they have these meetings in Orlando and, and uh, in communities north of here, if they have the same concerns, if their summers are ruined. And as a member, you know, as the deputy secretary of the DEP, uh, can you give us some insight on what's happening up in those areas? Are they spending hundreds of millions of dollars of their taxpayer money to affect fixes as we are here? Good question, Commissioner. Uh so when we worked on the Lake Okeechobee Basin Management Action Plan, we reached all the way up to the headwaters in Kissimmee. Um, and we said, all right, governments, you need to do your part. You need to implement uh, reductions, whether that's wastewater discharges, septic discharges, stormwater discharges, uh, to protect Lake Okeechobee. In their immediate vicinity is the upper Kissimmee chain of lakes, uh, Lake Toho, Lake Kissimmee, uh, Lake Cypress. Those are lakes that need work. And so we are hosting meetings up there to uh, get them to do what they need to protect not only those lakes, but Lake Okeechobee. I would tell you that uh, investment in the entire Lake Okeechobee watershed is necessary um, because as the, for 